everyone. After a one year break from making videos, it's time for me to come back and make more unfinished series. I had this awesome idea that I'd impose my face onto a sphere. Unfortunately, this angle really doesn't flatter me, and I swear I am more handsome usually. Well, my other unfinished C++ series is around a year old now, and with Unreal Engine constantly changing, it's time for a brand new Ultimate Unreal Engine C++ series. Join me as your host and let me teach you a thing or two about how to make games with Unreal Engine. Right after these messages from our sponsor, who is actually me. Learn to make a fully working Battle Royale game you can play with friends using my Udemy course. Try for $13.99 using the link in the description. Because Unreal Engine can get confusing and make as little sense as this pig with smoke coming out of it, I'm going to explain the absolute basics first and then we can try to tackle some of the coding shortly. Let's start with actors. An actor is any object inside the level, like this pig here. Or this wolf, or this pole, or this street lamp, or this other pole, or this other pole, or these crows. The interesting thing about actors, however, is that they're made up of actor components. For example, if I click on the pig here, you can see that there's one part of the pig, that's the part we can see, and that's a skeletal mesh component. And then there's also a particle system, that's the smoke part of the pig. So anything you need to make inside of Unreal Engine, you'll generally make it by creating an actor and then adding whatever actor components you need to it. To further explain this concept, let's take a look at my character here. Now in the game, here's my character and I can move him around using the WASD keys. But if we actually take a look at the actor, there's a ton of components that make him up. For example, there's a capsule component to provide collision and make sure our character doesn't walk through walls. There's an arrow component to show which way is forward. There's a mesh component, which is the part of the character you can actually see. There's a camera boom, which is what the camera attaches to. There's a camera, which represents our point of view. And then finally, there's a character movement component to drive our character's movement. And the idea is, and I really can't stress this enough, anything that you want to make within the Unreal Engine can basically be made of an actor and then just adding a series of different components to it. It's no secret that making games is really hard. And while I'd love to show you how to install Visual Studio, I feel like if you don't understand how to install Visual Studio, then this course is probably going to be beyond what you're capable of doing anyway. So that's your first challenge. Install Unreal Engine on your own. But I will leave a link in the description to a guide, so I, it really shouldn't be that hard. Keep in mind, with this being a C++ series as well, you will need Visual Studio installed. I am using Unreal Engine version 4.21 for this series. And although 4.22 will be out soon, um, we're not going to be using it because it's still in preview. So make sure that you use 4.21. That is very important. Otherwise, you might have some slight issues going forward. When you click on Launch to launch the Unreal Engine, you'll be greeted with the Project Browser. Here in the Project Browser, you can click on the New Project tab, go to C++, and we're going to make a new third-person template project. I like to use the third-person template because it gives us a nice character that we can walk around with. And you can go ahead and call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Ultimate. Once you click Create Project, it will generate all of the code files and do all of the other project creation related stuff. If you installed everything correctly, you will have a Unreal Project window open and you'll also have Visual Studio open as well, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So um, let's just quickly show you around the Unreal Engine and take you through some of the things. Um, the first thing that you'll see is going to be the Modes panel. Uh, this has a bunch of things you can drag into the level, and honestly, we really don't need to worry about it right now. This is the toolbar. It has a bunch of options like settings, playing the game, etc. The World Outliner is a big list of every actor in the world. So if we click on, for example, the player, which is an actor, you can see it appears here in the list. The details panel shows you the details for an actor that you've selected. It'll show you all of the components in that actor. And if you click on a component, you can see the details for that component as well. You also have the content browser. This is similar to if you've used something like Unity. Um, it just has all of the 
folders for your project and all of the assets as well. So that's the basic tools to move around. Hold the right mouse button down to rotate. Hold the left mouse button down and move your mouse to move around. And scrolling will sort of zoom the, the camera backwards and forwards like that. So you can, you can get around pretty easily like that. So we're going to click play and as you can see we can now run around with our character. Let's go ahead and we'll write our first little bit of code. It's going to be super simple. We're just going to make our own custom actor. So in the modes panel up here you can see that if I drag an empty actor into the level I can click add component and I can add things like meshes if I would like to. I could add a... Uh, let's see here. I could add whatever I want. I could add a sphere. So you can add a blank actor and add different components to it. And that's really all that our character is, right? It's a blank actor, but then we just add a bunch of components to it. So to make a new custom actor, you do this all through the C++ side of things. We're going to click on File, New C++ Class, and then click on Actor. Next, we'll need to give our actor a name. I'm going to go ahead and call mine Custom Actor. So if you've installed everything correctly in Visual Studio, it will open up your project. I'm using a plugin called Visual Assist, so all of my characters are a different color. But if you don't have Visual Assist, it's really not a big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a actor. So you can see here is my custom actor class. And I'm just going to add a really simple component. That's all I'm going to do is just add one component to my actor. And, and, and that's really all we need to do for now. To create components, you do this inside of the constructor of your class. You can see this method here is the constructor. Now, if you've done any C++, C Sharp, etc., you will know what a constructor is, and I do require that you at least know some basic coding to partake in the series. Of course, you could not know how to code and copy along, but you really wouldn't be understanding much. It's up to you. Anyways, we're going to go to customactor.cpp, and we're going to go to the constructor, and let's add our first component. To add a component to the actor, you simply just type create default subobject, and this is a function that will create a subobject. Now, a subobject is owned by our actor, and it can be components and it can be other things, but generally speaking, um, this is how we create components and add them to our actor. Now, this uh, function has a template, so you do need to do these angled brackets here and then put the type that we're trying to create. I'm going to add a static mesh component to my actor. So we're going to type u static mesh component. And then inside of here in quotes, we're going to put the name of the component. Once we've done that, we're just going to put a semicolon at the end. And that is literally all you need to create a static mesh. It's very, very simple. However, this really doesn't make sense because why would we go to the effort of coding our own custom actor if it didn't do anything special? In Unreal Engine, you can simply drag a empty actor into the level and then just add component inside of the editor. So why would we go to all this effort of coding a custom solution for this? So let's add a little bit of custom code and make this actor do something special that it wouldn't normally be able to do. I'm going to make this actor a random size. So the size of the actor will be completely random when it begins playing. What we need is we need a variable to store our static mesh component in that we just created. So you can create a static mesh component, but you do need a variable to store that in. Let's go back to customActor.h and we'll make under the protected section a new u static mesh component. This does need to be a pointer, and we're going to call this static mesh. In Unreal Engine 4, we have these things called decorators, and these allow you to describe different information about variables to Unreal Engine. One of them is called uProperty. So above the uStaticMesh component, we're going to type uProperty. This is a macro, and what happens is something called the Unreal Header tool scans over our project and looks for these tags. And then it allows us to do different things with this mesh component inside of the engine. I'm going to add the meta keyword edit anywhere. And I'll also give it a category. I'm going to call it components. 
So for now, although this property thing might be a little bit confusing, these will start to make more sense as we use them more and more. You will use these everywhere. They are very, very common. And um, what putting edit anywhere will do is it will allow us to edit this component from within Unreal Engine. So we're going to go ahead and go back into custom actor and we'll say that static mesh is equal to this default sub object. And then when we start the game, I'm going to set the scale of the static mesh to be a random value. So you can scale a static mesh and make it bigger or smaller. And the way that you do that is you say static mesh set scale 3D and there's set relative scale and set world scale. We're going to use set world scale. And you can see there is F vector new scale. Now the little special custom logic that I want to code into our actor is I want it to be a random scale. To get a random scale you can do this really easily in Unreal Engine by typing fmath vrand and that will just give you a random vector and then we're setting that static mesh scale equal to the return type of that vector. So that we can use the static mesh, we're going to include the header file for it. So we're going to type hash or pound sign include, and then inside of brackets, we're going to say classes slash components. Make sure that you use forward slashes, and then you want to say static mesh component dot h. This will allow us to actually use the static mesh inside of the engine, or inside of this class, I should say. And we're doing all of this inside of the begin play function, which is called when the game begins. So that's pretty much all you need to know about that. Let's go ahead and click on this little play thing here, local windows debugger. Make sure that your engine is closed and then, or your project is closed and then click on this and it will restart the engine, but with our new custom actor inside of it. Okay guys, so let's have a look here. We'll go down to the sources panel, click on C++ classes. And here is our custom actor that we just made. Go ahead and drag the custom actor into the level. Instead of dragging an empty actor in, this time we're dragging our own custom actor in. Click on static mesh. Click the drop down. And I'm going to search for the chair. In fact, it looks like we don't have a chair. Let's just click on the cube. And we'll go ahead and drag the cube up. And when I play the game, notice that the cube is a random scale every single time that I play the game. So this is how you would make any sort of game thing that you want. You just create your own actor and then add some custom logic to it. So how cool is that? We've made our first actor. Obviously it doesn't do a lot right now. It just sets itself to a random scale. But nonetheless, it's a nice starting point and it's a basic example to show you guys how actors work. So. In the next video, I think we're going to get a little bit more complicated than just doing this, but I think that's a pretty good starting point. For now, I would just get familiar with navigating around the Unreal Editor and just figuring out what all the different buttons do and things like that. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.